Folks, welcome back to Walters Aircraft Works, where we're going to convert this RX-7 to an EV. It's still a Friday, Good Friday, 2017. Our task today is to uh, try to figure out how we're going to attach this AC-50 motor to our Mazda transmission. Now we've chosen to uh, directly couple the motor to the transmission. What does that mean? Well, it means the output shaft of the motor, the one and eighth inch output shaft, keyed output shaft, will connect directly to our input shaft of our transmission. This is a splined transmission input shaft, and we're going to have to machine or create a coupling to hook those two together. But we also have to be able to support the motor on the transmission. Actually, when they're bolted together, they'll become one unit and there'll be a three points of contact with the vehicle to the uh, regular engine mounts that the, uh, the internal combustion engine of the RX-7 used. So that'll be a little bit farther down the road, but we're going to need to, like I said, create a coupling to couple these two shafts together. Now, to use uh, the splines of the transmission input shaft, I've bought a clutch disc. I bought it off of eBay. I paid, I believe, 35 bucks plus shipping for it. I look for a used one. All we really need to use is this spline coupling right here. Uh-oh, getting some help. Jets in. Well, that's Jets in making an appearance. All right, so we need to use this splined coupling right here. It used one would have been just fine. Okay, small interruption there from uh, from Jetson, but we're back. Uh, this internal coupling, uh, spline coupling, is all we really need. I look for a used clutch disc. It really, uh, that's all we needed since we're going to take most of this apart or take it all apart and just use this internal coupling. I didn't need any of this friction material, didn't need new friction material, but this is all I could find. So my plan is to uh, take this apart. Uh, it looks to me like if we, uh, if we drill out some of these rivets, grind these rivets off, that this internal spline coupling will come off and then we will be able to use the lathe and uh, create a uh, steel coupling that that'll either weld to or bolt to and then slide over this shaft. We'll have to broach a quarter inch keyway in it. And then I'm not sure exactly how we're going to uh, tighten it onto this shaft or if it's even that important to tighten it onto this shaft. Uh, it's gonna be keyed. This output shaft will be butted right up to the end of this input shaft for the transmission. So once we get the drive coupling on there, um, there's really no place for it to go. This distance will be uh, will be reduced. This output shaft should be buttoned right up close to the end of this input shaft and the drive coupling connecting the two of them. Did a little bit of a drawing here. Um, I apologize, I'm not a great artist, but uh, maybe this will explain a little bit better about what's going on. This represents the motor, the transmission, input shaft or output shaft of the motor, input shaft of the transmission, and uh, adapter plate, and uh, oh my goodness. All right, sorry about that. Had to stop and, uh, and love on the cat a little bit. Uh, he, he requires a lot of attention, and uh, hey, he doesn't care what's going on. He's going to get it. All right, so back to the drawing here. Uh, motor, output shaft, drive coupling, adapter plate, transmission input shaft, and transmission. This is what we're going to have to build on the lathe using that part from the clutch plate to connect the uh, input shaft of the transmission to the output shaft of the motor. All right, so that's what we're planning on doing is uh, getting started today on laying out the groundwork anyways for the adapter plate and, uh, and this drive coupling. Let me uh, change some things around and get set up and we'll get started. Okay, with uh, just some quick uh, dimensions here, the distance from the 
end of this output shaft of the motor and this face plate here is an inch and seven eighths. So one and uh, seven eighths. If you draw a line or place a ruler across the bell housing and measure how far this input shaft sticks out from that plane, it's just one eighth of an inch. It just barely sticks out. So the distance that we have to uh, to work with there is, uh, you know, easy math there, um, equal to uh, the two inches. The best we can do without modifying this the input shaft or the output shaft, definitely don't want to mess with this uh, nice pretty output shaft here. The best we can do is two inches. We will need uh, two inches of space between the flange of this bell housing and the flange of this motor. We could, if we get in a pinch, don't want to have that much space between the two of them. We could cut this input shaft off. We could grind it off. Uh, we don't really need it when you're using it on the, the normal internal combustion engine and the uh, clutch and pressure plate setup. This normally rides in a bushing or a bearing. They call it a uh, pilot bushing or a pilot bearing. And that supports the end of this shaft. We don't really need that because the motor and the transmission are going to be coupled together all the time. In an internal combustion engine, they aren't. When you push in the clutch, then that uncouples the engine to the transmission and you get free spooling in here, which then you know lets this, this shaft kind of move around. That's what pilot bearing does, is keeps that shaft from, uh, uh, from wiggling around too much. Well, we don't need that because it's going to be coupled together, you know, basically permanently put together. This bearing on the end of this motor will then help support this shaft. So if we need to, we can we can trim this on back. I think um, we try not to if we don't have to, but if we need to, then uh, then we will. All right. So what are we going to use for an adapter plate? Well, I happen to have this uh, piece of five eighths inch thick aluminum uh, was left over from another project, so I think it's going to work good uh, to make this adapter plate. How are we going to lay it out? That's that's our next plan. All right, I decided to make a template. Uh, seems like the easiest thing to do. And how I'm gonna do it is use this. This is an old uh, door face off of an old uh, Malamine cabinet that I've uh, repurposed for other stuff. But I've drilled a hole in the center of it. I've got a piece of, uh, uh, I don't know, it's uh, cardboard my wife brings me from work, and I love using it for uh, template material. What I'm planning on doing is standing the transmission up on this cabinet door with the output shaft in the hole there, using a pen to trace around the outside of the bell housing as well as the bolt holes and, and the, the other thing that we need to trace around. Then we can cut this template out lay it on our piece of metal and move it around and see uh, how much material we're going to use up. All right, so uh, I'm going to draw a pencil line around it or a pen, I use a pen, I guess, and uh, mark it, scribe it, and uh, then we'll take it back apart and uh, cut out our template. All right, so I just wound up uh, just tracing around uh, the outside of the uh, bell housing here. I wound up using a pencil, this uh, mechanical pencil that I have seemed to work pretty good. The ink pen uh, didn't work so well as I, I rolled it up underneath places like uh, like here. It uh, kind of laid it down on its side too much and wouldn't, uh, wouldn't work very well. I also um, used a punch here. Uh, just really a, a round piece of stock that I chucked it up in the lathe and uh, drilled it and then countersunk it. Made a sharp edge around the outside and then took my hammer and uh, you know just cut through the papers seemed to work pretty good oops now I got it stuck in here it was longer when I did these these longer holes you get the point um, we should be able to pull it off now and uh, cut around the outside of the perimeter there and have a, a pretty decent template to lay out our material 
Okay, that worked pretty good. Uh, got the template cut out. Uh, felt like uh, craft day at uh, summer camp, but uh, we got it cut out. Uh, fits the bell housing uh, real well, and I think it's going to be real beneficial for helping us determine uh, best utilization of this uh, slab of aluminum. Uh, the intention was to, to be able to position and, uh, and cut out our adapter plate, at least the big part of the adapter plate, and then be able to cut two more uh, spacer rings out of this material to go on the, the face plate of the motor here, a nine inch motor, four inch inner ring here. So basically a donut with an inside diameter of four inches and an outside diameter of nine inches. Be able to stack those on top of each other, uh, one thickness uh, for the uh, for the plate here for the bell housing, and then two of those donut rings to uh, to stack on top should equal. Well, we'd be just a little bit short of our two inch dimension here. We would be five eighths times three. Uh, don't don't look at my math here. This is a chicken scratch. Five eighths times three would be what an inch and seven eighths. So we would be an eighth of an inch short of our two inch mark. So that would be three slabs or three thicknesses of this material. We would still need an eighth of an inch of, of some other material. That's that's what all this means. But um, anyways, I don't think that's that's all for not anyways, because there isn't enough material here in this piece to uh, to get our, our bell housing piece out of it, plus two donuts. So we're going to have to come up with some other material and if I have to come up with more material then I'll probably just buy thicker material and um, we won't have to worry about uh, trimming back this uh, input shaft to the transmission. So uh, stay tuned. I'll, uh, I'll try to find some more material and uh, we'll press on from there. Hey, check that out. With the uh, magic of editing, we're back. We've got the material in hand. Uh, actually, it's been about four days. I've been off uh, working the day job. While I was gone, I uh, ordered a couple of pieces of aluminum. I got it from uh, eBay, actually a company called Stoner Tool and Raw Material. Uh, these two uh, pieces of 60, 61, 3 quarters of an inch thick, 9 inches uh, by 9 inches um, with shipping. Well, actually, they didn't charge me any shipping. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Was uh, was sixty bucks, fifty nine dollars and uh, ninety eight cents. Might have been able to find it locally a little bit cheaper, but I think it's going to work out well for us. This uh, will, will turn into hopefully two uh, two nice spacer rings, and uh, still use our uh, a big slab here of the five eighths thick material to create this part. That's next. I guess we're going to have to figure out how to to shape these how to turn them into those donuts and uh, I'm sure the lathe will be involved in that uh, maybe possibly the mill but uh, uh oh got some more help but uh, let me think about that for a few minutes and uh, we'll get started on that shortly alright I'm trying to decide whether uh, I want to uh, scribe around the outside of this template or uh, just glue the template to the, the aluminum stock and then trim around uh, the template itself. I'm, I'm leaning that direction. I've used this uh, 3M product uh, for a lot of other stuff and it, it works pretty good. It, it, uh, it's probably a little bit too strong for this particular application. Uh, they make some uh, um, you know weaker uh, glue that would probably be better um, we really don't need this template really stuck to that material very well, but this is what I have on hand and I'm thinking about just putting a light coat of the uh, uh, adhesive on the template and then sticking it to the aluminum and cutting around the, the template. A couple other thoughts as well. The hole in the center uh, right now is just, for our template purposes, is just really a reference point or it, it allows that uh, input shaft to kind of stick through the hole. but Eventually, that hole is going to have to be enlarged. Or on the when we get the uh, adapter plate cut out, we're going to have to enlarge that hole to receive, or it's going to have to be big enough to uh, to receive without interference the coupling that goes between the output shaft of the motor and the input shaft of the transmission. And what that size of the hole is, I'm not sure it really makes a difference. 
it's not a critical dimension and probably the more material that we can remove the better will be uh, structurally I don't think it's going to cause a problem and we're just going to reduce weight and that's always a good thing to reduce weight on an electric car but right now I have to think about how I'm going to cut that hole in the center you know it's not real critical it'd be nice for it to be nice and centered up on this hole right here to help us align the spacer rings it's not super critical but I'm thinking what I'm going to do to uh, to cut that hole in the center is I'm going to use my turntable in the mill. So what that means to us right now is this hole um, needs to be a particular size to fit my uh, turntable. And let me get that up here on the bench. So, all right, this is the uh, turntable that I have for uh, for my Bridgeport mill, and uh, it's a pretty useful tool. I've used it for uh, quite a few uh, <laughs> projects, and uh, hopefully it'll work well uh, for this one. Uh, my idea is to uh, to use our template. All right, uh, once again, apologize for the interruption from the uh, mouse patrol. But what we were talking about was uh, once this template, uh, we use this template to cut our part out. Uh, I think that we can use this hole here in the template to uh, define the, the spot in the part where we need to drill the hole that'll keep us pretty well lined up with our input shaft of our transmission and if we drill that hole to the size of this pin here which I believe is a half inch that'll help us index our part onto this table and once we get the part located on the table correctly and we put a sacrificial piece of wood between our part and rotating table we'll be able to uh, drill through the part and then uh, in that hole that we create we can use the mill to lower a bit into that hole and then turn the handle on the table and the mill will create a nice large hole in our adapter plate for us. I think this is going to work well. There's other ways of doing it. We could use a, a boring bar setup, uh, some type of fly cutter. I think this is going to create the, the best hole for us. So uh, I think our next step is we need to lay this uh, template on our material and uh, find the best placement for it to, uh, to utilize our material the best and, and go ahead and cut uh, the adapter plate out. So uh, let me get that set up. All right, I, I glued the template to uh, to the stock and uh, it just sprayed a little bit of that uh, 3M77 spray adhesive on there, just a real light uh, coating on the template, and then stuck it. I kind of moved the template around it to kind of get uh, you know the best uh, utilization out of the stock that I could, and then stuck it on down. Task at hand is to uh, center punch this center hole. Um, I found a uh, bearing driver. And then I've uh, I pulled out my 5 16 center finder here that, that slides nicely into this uh, bearing driver. That'll help us center it up, uh, center up um, inside that template there. These holes, I'm not going to center punch these yet. I think once we get the template or the uh, adapter plate uh, part cut out and uh, this center hole cut, we can then set the transmission bell housing back on our part, center it all up, and then uh, use the bell housing holes themselves to, uh, to center punch these, these holes. And then we should have a good, uh, we should have good alignment. So uh, let me go ahead and center punch this center hole, uh, the input shaft hole, and then we'll get, uh, we'll get to cutting. All right, we're set up over here on the uh, bandsaw. This is one of my favorite tools in the shop here. Uh, this thing just uh, cuts through about anything. But we're going to use it uh, right now. I'm just going to uh, just kind of square things up or uh, kind of rough cut the material out. And uh, then I'm not sure exactly how we're going to trim it right up to the edge of that template, whether I'm going to do, uh, you know, uh, set some kind of milling process up or 
do it with the uh, hand grinders or a combination of the two. But I'm going to try to get it pretty darn close with this. This is a great saw and it works well for cutting metal, but it's not real maneuverable. It won't cut really tight radiuses, at least with the blade that I have in it. So uh, it's going to be kind of rough cut and then we're going to need to do some hand work either with the mill or uh, with the uh, angle grinders or uh, a combination of the of the two so let's get cracking here may have to change blades it's uh it's cutting pretty slow let me swap blades out and uh, see if we can get through it a little bit quicker we got a lot of cutting to do here all right, this is a more aggressive blade, and uh, hopefully this will, uh, will help us get through it a little quicker. Let's give it a try. All right, let's give it another whirl here, a third try. The uh, first blade that we were trying to cut with was a uh, well it's been on the saw for quite some time and it was uh, 10 teeth per inch the uh, second blade was a new blade and a little bit more aggressive at seven teeth per inch and uh, this one I've gone back to a finer tooth and uh, it, it's new as well it's 14 teeth per inch and uh, let's hopefully uh, get this one to cut straight uh, kind of making a mess out of this uh, out of this cut but um, we got plenty of time to recover from it, or plenty of material to recover from it. So uh, hopefully this one will cut straight. Let's give it a try. All right, not the uh, prettiest of cuts there, but uh, I think uh, nothing a uh, grinder won't clean up and uh, that blade uh, did a lot better maybe not quite as quick but definitely it, it cut truer and uh, seemed to be uh, you know easier to control so I think that's what I'm going to use to uh, to trim the rest of it up hopefully it'll continue to cut well um, I won't bore you guys with uh, with all the uh, all the cutting on this so uh, I'll do uh, most of the rest of it off camera and then uh, bring you back in when it's uh, when it's time to uh, figure out how to, uh, to clean it up and, uh, and make it look good.
set up over here on the mill, I got the majority of the adapter plate itself uh, cut out, um, or at least a rough cut. I got a couple little areas here where um, the radius is real tight. And I didn't just want to come trucking in here with the, uh, with the bandsaw and make a square corner. So I, I'm going to drill this. And I'm going to do it on the mill so it's nice and vertical. And uh, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to find out uh, what kind of radius or how to match up this radius. And really this is, it's just a shot in the dark here and it's really not critical. But this is a, a pretty good technique that I've found that works uh, fairly well. I've got a washer here. It's a, I've got a, you know, like everybody probably has an assortment of, of washers. And uh, this one's a, a fairly small one, and I just kind of match the radius of that template, which of course is is not very exact itself, but it looks good there. So I'll I'll go ahead and uh, find a washer that that matches that radius, and uh, and now all it's just a matter of uh, taking a center punch again, a hole finder or a center finder, and uh, sticking it right in the middle of that washer. And, um, well, if I can get it in there, in the center. Well, let me push the washer back in the radius. Grab the uh, center punch again, the center finder. And uh, make sure it's good and squared up. And give it a little tap. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be using a ball-peen hammer for this. There we go. Now we've got the center of our radius. All I have to do is mic the outside of that washer and uh, figure out what the diameter. It looks like it's about a quarter of an inch. Um, I'll double check that with the micrometer or with the uh, calipers and get a equivalent size. Um, <laughs> oh no, equivalent size uh, drill bit and then uh, drill that hole. We got one more of these holes to do. It's over on the other side over here. And it's got a little bit bigger radius, and when I get that one set up, I'll, uh, I'll turn you back on uh, for that hole as well. Now this is the other side of the adapter plate, and this radius uh, on this side is a little bit bigger. And uh, just to show you, you know, not that this is uh, rocket surgery or anything, uh, let me show you the process I used. Um, you, know, you can see, well hopefully you can see, that, that washer is a little bit too small for that radius. And uh, this one's, yeah, you can't see very well, can you? But I'll take my word for it. This one's a little bit big. There's just a little bit of a gap here. So this one looks like, to me, it fits, fits about the best. And uh, so, again, we can just center punch this hole, and then we know where to, to, to start our starter drill and, and our drill bit to, to get that radius. If, if you didn't do some kind of method like this, you, you know, you can use a compass or template but it's always, for me anyways, it's hard to determine how far off of this radius do you start. Uh, if you just start plunging drill bits in here, it's not going to look very good, or chances are that it's not going to, uh, to put this radius exactly where you want it. So this, this method works well for me, and I think you'll see that uh, it, it works. All right, got the uh, center uh, drill set up in here and uh, punched and we'll go ahead and drill this uh, center drill it and then uh, that washer mic'd out to pretty close to five eighths of an inch so probably step it on up uh, in several different sizes up to uh, to five eighths of an inch but here we go all right so this is a quarter inch this is the uh, diameter that will drill out the other side the smaller radius and then uh, we'll do one more on this one up to uh, five eighths Well, we're set up on the mill, we might as well drill this center hole. I just mic'd it. Uh, the pin on the rotating table is uh, half an inch. And uh, we'll, we'll center drill it first and then drill it with a half inch drill. All right, we're ready to center drill this one. This one's the small radius. It's a quarter inch drill bit's what we're gonna drill it with. So a uh, half inch, or a, I'm sorry, eighth inch radius. 
Yeah, I got a little ambitious with the center drill there. Um, I think it's going to be uh, just fine, but uh, probably shouldn't have plunged quite so deep with the center drill. All right, well, back to uh, back to the bandsaw now to finish up uh, those uh, the rough cut, and then uh, we're gonna have to try to figure out how to smooth this thing up and make it make it look pretty. All right, we got uh, all the cutting done. Uh, you can tell that some places I did better than others. The uh, the saw blade continued to cut real well. I got uh, very close to the template. Started off being kind of conservative with it and then wound up going back and, and trimming more of it off and getting pretty close to uh, to the template. So won't be much sanding to do as far as bringing it up to the template, but just more or less sanding the edges, making the appearance look better. You know, that area right there, you can see it got a little bit of work to do there to grind it back down to the template and smooth it off, round it out a little bit. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the saw continued to cut well and uh, left us uh, very little work to do with the, uh, with the sanders. All right, I got you set up over top of my uh, belt sander. It's a one inch wide Delta belt sander. Does a pretty good job. I'm gonna try to use it on most of the outside corners and the, uh, the flat spots. Hopefully trying to keep it fairly perpendicular. I don't want to put any bevels or any rounded edges on on it yet uh, just trying to keep it pretty uh, the sides perpendicular with the face on it just for appearance reasons only the inside corners we'll have to tackle another way and i think we'll use the uh, drum sander on my drill press so let's get started most of the really rough saw marks out of it with the 50 grit sandpaper now I've switched over to 120 grit I'm gonna try to smooth up sanding marks a little bit and I think that'll be good enough from there All right, as you can see the uh, sander did a pretty good job of cleaning up the outside radiuses the outside corners did really well and the flat spots but these inside corners here are going to need a little bit of work with uh, something else and I think that something else is going to be a drum sander set up on my drill press so uh, let me get that set up and we'll give that a whirl. I got you perched up over the drill press with a drum sander in it this is the uh, biggest well not quite the biggest diameter one I have but a fairly good size one looks like it's going to fit in the bigger radiuses fairly well as we get down into those smaller ones I'll probably have to change out to a smaller drum sander got my drill press turned up as high as it'll go I don't know what the grid is on the drum sander it's it's fairly coarse so uh, hopefully it'll make short work out of these final saw marks on the inside radiuses <laughs> pretty good the edge is pretty smooth I got into uh, most of the corners fairly well pretty happy with it uh, the real tight radius corners uh, not quite as smooth as the rest of it but hey you're not gonna judge me are you I think I uh, think I like it I think I'm satisfied with it I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to peel the cover off from it now or the uh, template off from it and uh, maybe clean it up a little bit with some black or thinner or something get that zinc chromate off from it and then I don't know I might even hit it with the uh, the palm sander uh, knock the edges off a little bit it is well it's not too bad it's it's pretty decent can't really ch test fit it on the transmission yet because this center hole is still too small and got to do some planning on that to figure out uh, th this hole is going to help us index our our next project which is going to be the spacer rings made out of that three-quarter inch 
6061. So we don't want to drill this up to the size of the uh, transmission yet. Uh, the, the input shaft for the transmission could bump part of it up. It's only got to come up. I think it's mm, can't remember five eighths. I don't think I think it's just shy of five eighths. But I could bring part of this hole. And remember the output shaft or the input shaft only sticks out of the transmission by about an eighth of an inch. So I could plunge a drill bit in here. Um, you know, an eighth of an inch or so, and that would let us test fit it. But I'm pretty confident that it's going to fit. So, like I said, next time we're going to need to uh, to cut those spacer rings. Uh, that's going to require probably the mill and the lathe, and uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit of uh, redneck ingenuity as well. But thanks for sticking with me. I know this has been a long uh, video or a long uh, segment, and it's taken us a long time uh, to get to this point. By the way, uh, I compressed a bunch of the, the cutting and will the sanding as well. And all in all, I think I've spent about three hours cutting and sanding this um, adapter plate. Once again, thanks for uh, sticking with me and uh, come back for episode two when we'll do the, uh, the spacer rings. Thanks for watching.